you can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference here just a little so again we spent a hundred saving thousands subscribe for this 340 magnum guys come on look at this thing this is a new unit you want to subscribe to take a look and see what it is Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms. I'm just leaving my house. Let's go farming. Ah, it's gonna be a great day. I'm hoping we'll be able to get into the fields today. And... What is this? <laughs> I thought winter was over. Alrighty, stopped in at Kunal's in DeWitt. Got some parts for my sprayer. I'm actually gonna be doing a little bit of a project on it today, so I'll kinda explain it when we get up to the farm. But I'm um, here in DeWitt, they got a lot less snow because it's literally already melted. So that's kind of nice. So it gives me hope about there's not much snow when you go north of here. But we'll see. I'll see you guys up at the farm. Ooh, look at those two nice deer planters. Alrighty guys, up at the farm right now, all the snow has melted, but we had two inches of snow this morning. So that's great, so it made everything a sloppy mess here. But we got a surprise for you guys. I'll show you guys that here soon. I got some parts. We're working on equipment today. Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so here's what we're doing right now. The feed wagon tractor is getting worked on. It's getting the oil changed, a couple other things. I am going to take the side-by-side -side run over next door and grab the hose. You guys can kind of see right there if it focuses. 340's got something new hooked on it. There's a reason for that. We're working on 400 right now. Just finishing up the touches on that, checking air pressures, greasing, etc., etc. So I'm gonna run over next door and get a hose. So 340's got a new anhydrous bar on it. DMI 5300. 17 shank. Here's my old tender wagon. Looking for the hose that was on it. Uh, it doesn't look like we have it here. Yeah, it looks like it's not on it, but this has got my 1500 gallon water tank, got my motor, got my eductor, and this tank was an old stationary water tank. It actually ended up blowing into the field last fall, so we just picked it up and stuck it on here. So I can't see the what, find the hose, so let's start looking for the hose. Should have guessed in my grandma's garage. So. Let's hook this thing up. It is sleeting slash snowing right now. That's always fun. I'm gonna pull the sprayer over here and start filling it up. All right, now I'm gonna start up the sprayer, fire that thing up, check the oil real quick, make sure nothing's leaking. Back that thing out. Oh, I forgot to get fuses, sweet. Back that thing out, fill it up with water, and try and get the, run this antifreeze out of the boom, which in turn, it'll basically see if my nozzle bodies are working or if they're plugging or what have you. So, check oil, and then let's start it up. Now let's go ahead and pull this thing out. I'm actually, I think I'm going to pull the, uh, these, switch out these tubes. I bought new ones at a retail store not too long ago, so I'm gonna switch out these two sight, these two sight tubes. I'll let this thing fill up. Got this thing cranked up, moved out, pull this thing over by the water tank, and start filling this thing up. All right, so what I'm gonna do, you can kind of see there's nothing but pink fluid in there, that's antifreeze. So I'm gonna start filling up with water. If basically, if I run two water cycles through it, then we should be good to go. So I'll turn the hydrogen on. There we go, now this thing will start filling up. So now what I'm gonna do, take a hose clamp and un undo all these, switch these two tubes out. So like I said before, these are my viewing pipes to tell me how full the level is. I'm replacing it because clear water, you can't see crap like that. So I'm putting a brand new pipe down there. So what I gotta do is I loosen the hose clamp down there. I loosen those two hose clamps and I already loosened that one down there. Cut these zip ties, pull them off, bring them down, measure exactly how much I need on that one and then put those on. By that time, this thing will be full. Enough for me to work on. There we go. All right, let's go down and replace them. Or cut to length and then replace it. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference here. Just a little. For the record, this started out as that. So now let's trim them to length. All right, I got the first hose on. I got the second one. You can, again, 
night and day difference what it'll be. So I'll hop up here and get the second one put on, installed. Then open the valves to shut off to these things. I shut the valves off, that way I can fill the tank without spilling water everywhere. And I'll zip tie everything. Then we'll be good to go. Alrighty, so I did just have a nice time lapse of uh, me putting this on if that went, if that just got destroyed. So now I'm gonna turn these banjo valves on the bottom, let this fill up, and make sure I don't have any leaks. <clears throat> so let's head to the bottom. Yeah, those are disgusting. All right, so this banjo valve right here, I'm either going to get wet or I'm going to be job well done. Job well done. There you can kind of see, well, you can't see it right now, but water's level. Found it at the backside. Awesome. Go get zip ties, zip tied up together, shut the hose off, and let's go spray. Alrighty, this stagger is going to be all ready to go here in the next half hour. Just topping up with oil, checking the fluids, and this thing's gonna be ready to go. We'll park it out of the way and hopefully pull the 340 up and get working on that, but we're working on the feeder wagon right now. Alright, this side is a massive pain in the butt because you know there's a cab in the way and I have like six inches of room. But I got it done, so let's do the other side. Ow, that hurt. Alright, job is done. So now I'm going to get out. There's about 400 gallons in here, which is about 200 more than I wanted, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go out and spray that out. All right, I got a question for you guys. Where is the antenna mount for the radio on these stagger, on these case cabs? So where does it come out at, the broadband uh, cab? Does it come out of the radio or do you guys have any uh, tips on how to install it? Because I know this thing has a radio, has an antenna mount, but right now I just have the little small antennas that come with these micro mobiles, these MXT 115s, but it'd be nice to actually get a good antenna hooked up to this thing, so. Do you guys have any thoughts or any ideas where this thing is? Let me know in the comments down below or I'd appreciate it. Thank you guys. All right, time to fire it up, maiden voyage. Time to see how good of or not so good of a start we're gonna have this year. Alrighty, I got the pump on, everything's fired up. So now let's try and sneak out of here and go over and spray it out. First, just probably make sure uh, nothing's leaking. It's the first time running all year. If I didn't winterize it right, we could have something spraying everywhere and I wouldn't even know it. But survey says, I don't see anything spraying, which is good. There's your pump. All right, everything looks good to me. So let's go out and spray this thing. All right, now let's unfold this boom. I flip my switch here to activate the booms and now I can control them like this. Like I'll hit up, that raises it. And we're good. And it's the same thing on this side. There we go. Now I'll unfold it. And that looks like rain. Joy. So now I basically did a self test. It's going to act like I'm driving 10 mile an hour. So now I think got my sections all on, pumps running. I think if I hit start, it should go. Which it is. Awesome. Everything's running. Let's hop out. Make sure everything gets up to rate, and then I'll hop out and go take a look and make sure all the nozzle bodies are spraying. Looks like they are, though. I'm not getting any error codes, so let's go take a look. So here's where I'll go out, and like I said, it's, in, it's important to make sure you have all your tips spraying, because if you don't, you'll actually have skips in your field, and you don't want skips. So I'm just going to walk through, make sure every single one of these tips are spraying. Yeah, they all look pretty good right now. It smells like antifreeze, but it all looks good. Looks really good. I have a good pattern on everything. Nothing's plugged. That's awesome. So how these things work is a, a conventional sprayer. You use two things to vary your output. You have pressure and then you have volume. So your volume is your most, or your rate is your most important thing when you're spraying. You gotta keep that constant because your rate controls how much chemical you throw out on the ground. So you gotta keep that constant at all costs. So with a conventional sprayer, you vary your speed by your pressure. So you have this size of tip right here, how big that is, and your pressure determines how fast you can go. But with a pulsing system, which is what I had, it adds a third variable in. So basically I can vary this nozzle body opening from 25% to 100%. So I can keep my pressure constant, 
which gives me better droplet size and better control over my chemicals and my spray. And I can have three times the, the size of speed. Just by varying this pulse, it's pop it's opening from 25% to 100%. So I can get three times the speed range, so from five mile an hour to 15 mile an hour instead of 11 to 15 with this pulsing system. And there's a bunch of other benefits too, like bigger droplet sizes with things, less drift. Oh, there's Nathan. There's Nathan. It also means uh, turn compensation and a couple other things, and individual nozzle control. This is an awesome system and I highly love it. We will never go to a, a regular conventional sprayer again. Got a lot of nozzle bodies dripping, which I don't like. That means the seal's going bad. But one, two, three. This is my bad tip. I was having a bad pattern. Try and clean it out. Nothing really crap in there, so. Uh, let's try it again. Basically, I could tell because it was pitter pad and it wasn't a nice screen coming out of it. So this is my harness that's broken. Right here, I believe Pat ripped it off last year. But it's kind of not his fault because you can kind of see the harness sticks up quite a ways where we had a different style nozzle body, which I just picked up. They sit down here so they're not sticking up so high. So we might throw those on. We'll see. But right now, I think this thing's almost ready to go. All right. 400 is all ready to go. So he's gonna pull it out of the way. I'm gonna pull the sprayer up. And then get it thing unfolded and start working on it. Nathan's going through. We're checking which poppets seals are bad. We're gonna replace them. It's basically if I don't replace them, then uh, we're just gonna dribble out and leak a bunch. So we're just gonna replace all the ones that are leaking right now. That way we will be completely sealed when we shut off and we won't have any dribbling. So what Nathan and I are doing is we're putting new nozzle bodies on. As I said before, our old ones, they stick up. The harnesses stick up and they're really easy to get caught on trees and limbs and stuff. But this new one, it sticks off to the side. It's much more tighter and tucked in because right here, there's, it's free and open range for sticks and stuff. And I'm not the greatest driver, so and I'll need all the help I can get. Alrighty guys, so what I did is I did some repairing. You can kind of see, this is the new style. You look how there's like nothing up top to hang on, to hang out uh, for wires, for trees and stuff to catch. What they used to be is they used to be like this. They stuck up a good three inches and the harness was just sitting out there and you were just begging trees and limbs and whatever to catch it, rip your harness off. Just a whole bunch of bad things. We actually had that happen to me twice, to Pat three or four times, so. It's really good. This is a really cheap investment. I think this thing costs probably a hundred bucks. This thing's gonna save us thousands, I guarantee you, in lost downtime and uh, service calls. Basically what we did, all we did was change this plastic part out to stick it out the side and make it much more low profile. And this was a 100% a smart thing to do because we'll go over on the other side and look at it. And the other side we're gonna do tomorrow. It's getting a little late and a little cold. So we're gonna sh save it for tomorrow, but all we did was just change in the housing and it everything else and then we rotated the spray pipe but it was pretty easy to do and we're definitely gonna do it to the other side too so you can kind of see this one actually got ripped off last year you can kind of see this stuff sticking out when this thing's 50 feet away from the cab going along fence lines and tree lines and brush trying to really kill everything anything that hangs out that's loose we get caught and ripped off and that's what happened to this so it was good, so we got that changed over, and I am really happy, guys. This sprayer is ready to go, just about. I got some small things to do on it, but for the most part, this thing's ready to go. I thought we'd have a couple plug nozzles, got to do some deep cleaning. I thought we'd have to pull all the tips, pull all the poppets, and I thought we'd have to change all that stuff, but no, I think we're looking good. But now, what we'll do is, as I was mentioned before, we have these, this uh, sprayer is controlled by these little poppets. Well, they're actually, uh, when they go bad, they start dribbling and leaking. So what we gotta do is I'll probably pick up 12 or 16 of those uh, spring poppets tomorrow, or as many as they got, and we'll replace as many of them that are bad. That way I don't drip and leak, as I kind of mentioned before. So let's go ahead and turn this spray pipe. I had this loosened so I can turn it straight down again. Now, some people have a fancy toolbox that they put in their equipment for, that they can fix stuff in the field. Well, here's what I got. A fancy box box. So I'm gonna go through all this right now. There is a lot of stuff that I gotta go through. Just basically throw away stuff that's junk and keep stuff that's good. And then I'm gonna throw, set this thing in the sprayer, fold it up, put it in the shed, close everything up, 
head home. Alrighty, got my box all cleaned up. I basically got spare nozzle bodies on the bottom and then spare tools and then kits in this small box. So I finally got this organized after two years and I think I'm gonna close up shop for the night. Go up and grab something that like to eat. Fold this thing up, put it away. Let's get loaded away. Got the nice 340. Sit with that 5300 DMI and call her a night. All right, let's fold this thing up. Putting this thing away, thankfully. Cannot wait. I think Monday now we're gonna start spraying for sure. Maybe Sunday if we're lucky. It was a successful day. Look how shiny this thing looks. Whew. So the sprayer is looking good. So I'm gonna pull the skid loader in, shut the, shut the door, lock everything up, call her a night. So you guys know what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This is a rental from uh, Eberhardt's. It's got closing discs on it, which is really nice. We don't have these on our bar right now, but basically what this does is when you make your transfer in hydrous, it kind of helps seal up, seal it up so you don't lose anything to leakage. But this is a 17 shank. It is 60 inches wider than our current one. It's a nice one. We have it, we've had it running for a day. But anyway, now we're gonna close out this video. If you guys did enjoy that video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hard Tongue Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now and see you tomorrow.